morning, Minka. Morning, Jessica. Welcome. You're the first two ones. Um, you either have had classes already this morning. Um, maybe just early rises. Maybe you went for a jog. Maybe you went to the gym. Maybe you just had a very good weekend. You've very energized. Looking forward to the week. Um, how's the weekend been? Everybody uh, enjoyed themselves. The weather was actually quite nice for those who ventured outside. Or as a matter of fact, it was a bit too hot. How's everybody doing? I'm good, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Minka. Um, you enjoyed the weekend? Yes, sir. That's, that's very nice. <laughs> it's nice to have a weekend where you actually have started class already, but you didn't really have that much to do already. So um, actually, um, and that was the intention last week to sort of ease into things, get to know a new platform that we're working on. Let me just add Molly to the group as well. I'm quickly going to take attendance um, still on our spreadsheet, which is fine, but um, Let's give everybody, uh, we are slightly early, although I've got three clocks in front of me here that have different times varying from 10.46 to 10.49. So um, I think with um, Tanika and I joining us as well, the majority of you are already signed in. Um, how's everybody survived the first week? First week wasn't that challenging because it was maybe just the information overload more than anything else, if I'm correct, right? Yes, sir. Did you cope, Danielle? Was the first week all right? Yes, sir. Just trying to summarize everything before I have to start with assignments and things. <laughs> it never ends. Eh? It's, it's like, yeah. Um, at, unfortunately, the nature of the beast, um, it comes with the territory. So at least um, I think you still have the opportunity um, for a contact session on campus um, or any other. Um, and, and remember, if there's anything else, um, I would I would advise you to, because I know that sometimes something is missing in class. And I know, for instance, um, this morning I asked for assistance because um, on Friday I wanted to start uploading all the Zoom sessions from last week. And it took forever for, um, let me get into risk on as well. It took forever for the, um, for the uploading of, of the videos. And, uh, up to the point where I actually didn't upload them. Um, but I still want to just show you today quickly before we start the class, or once everybody has joined, where you will find on your um, Canvas um, course page, um, on the module page, where you would find um, the recorded Zoom sessions. And for that matter, any other um, videos that maybe I stumbled across that's relevant to um, the section of the course we're busy with. Um, it's always nice, especially when you're doing services marketing, there's um, millions of fantastic and often very comical um, videos regarding um, good service and bad service. Uh, and often sometimes from, from movies that we know. So there's, there's, there's quite a lot, lot of additional video footage that we can upload and obviously that I will upload. Um, as a matter of fact, I think once I, as we go through the chapters and I see there's a video that is, that is a video link that um, is embedded in the um, text of the, of the slides, I will then also, um, obviously you can click on it and it will immediately take you there, but I'll do a hyperlink um, in that section too, so, um, in, in that se the section on your page um, that you have to, or, or where you can find the information um, or, or any video material for that matter. What I'm going to do at this point is um, let's just, um, um, I'm going to close that particular page so we can go to, um, I want to quickly just open and share a page with you so I can tick it off. Um, the attendance register, if you don't mind. Um, just um, give me an idea who's here. I, Jessica, I know is here. I'm just going to mark it on the screen. And uh, Andrishka, I know is present. Um, Maria, I think, um, have joined us. I, am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay, there we go. Tanika, I know that I've seen your name. Chris Maria, I haven't seen Minka, I know. 
um, page is on and Kia hasn't joined us yet. Am I correct? Those are the two, four, six of you that should be on. There should be one more. I'm missing one. Uh, Andrushka. Your money, I can see you. Oh, there we go. You know, I've marked you off already. What's wrong with me? Um, I've got Mink, I've got Paige, I've got Nika, Danielle. Danielle, Danielle, Danielle. Where's your name? Is your name not on you, Danielle? Is it possible? Nikita, no, um, that shouldn't be on there. It is, it is the yeah, we got, got it now. The got yeah. it now. I was just not at the right to the top of the page. Those are at the moment not here, and your presence, and that should not be read. That should be no, but it's also not you. It should be there. We go. We've got the seven students who are currently on. Um, in, that's currently on. Nobody else is joining us at the moment. Um, so I can close that one. Um, and I want to quickly just go to, um, I just want to quickly go to um, the another page that I want to share with you. And that is your, um, your services marketing um, canvas page. And we are in week two. We're going to um, start with managing services quality this week. Uh, well, today, I am going to just wrap up um, our first chapter. There's one or two things that um, I had a look at again on the weekend, and I think I just want to bring that to your attention again um, and just wrap it up properly. And it also finishes off, um, it finishes off the um, it finishes off the chapter with an overview of the entire course chapter by chapter. So, but let's go to week two. We're in week two at the moment. If we click on the module structure, we, you know that um, already you, all the different pages. So let's go to the overview of the week, what we want to achieve this week. All those objectives um, are issues like the dimensions of services quality and the different um, models that we're going to do. We're not going to look at the different um, models that's used to um, measure quality of a service uh, today, but we will during um, during the course of this week. Um, predominantly, we'll be working from chapter two in your in your manuals. You know that if we um, then click on the next, we'll go to the next page, which will be your resources. Your resources is quite simple. It is um, the resources uh, textbook, um, services marketing, and then also your um, under class material, we've got the slides. Um, if we go to next, you will see that um, there is additional resources. Now the additional resources is where you will find the uploaded video recordings for every week. What I've done is this week, for instance, the management of services of service quality. The recordings for the class today session and Tuesday and Wednesday session, I will upload it um, right next to the dates. So if you want to maybe revisit um, the recording. Um, if you go to week one, you'll see that I have not uploaded those videos because I'm still trying to find out uh, the logistical issues, why the upload takes so long. And that's why I haven't done it, but it's been converted to, um, to the proper video format already. Um, it's just the uploading and I want to make sure that I can use all the different condensing um, tools that um, that is available because there's, there's a lot out there um, that you can just download the free app and then condense it so it, it doesn't take that long to actually upload. But that's not your problem. It's, um, it's mine to resolve and it will be today. But uh, just to give you an idea, for each week, if you are looking at the recordings, um, uh, I told you last week that you'll find it under studio, but um, under that little heading that says the on the on the bottom left hand side of the screen that says studio, but that is where we upload the videos, um, and then basically I drag it to that studio over there, and from there it's embedded into the course, and you'll find it on the page that you see on the screen at the moment. Okay. I just thought that um, it's relevant for me to share that information with you at the start of the course um, or the start of the week. Is there anybody at this stage who's had a look at the assignment and who, are, who has questions related to the assignment? Because at any point, people, you can interrupt me and you can ask me questions. I will give the opportunity for every session 
um, to see, um, because everybody starts working on their assignments um, at, at a different time. Um, and, and, and as you progress, you'll pick up issues. You're welcome to drop me an email. I'll respond to it immediately. Um, you can also, if we go back, if I go back to the different pages, um, or let me go back to the home page and go to the to the first to the first page of um, the overview. Um, if there's any issues that you have, um, I know that the next page there is where you meet your lecturer. So if you um, there's all my detail and right at the bottom there. Um, if you're on campus and you need to find me, if I'm not in a classroom where I teach, uh, and that will obviously be according to the timetable that you have attached, um, there's my email address at the bottom. Okay, I respond to that on the same day that um, I check my emails um, every day when I'm finished with class. So on the day, if it's not immediate, um, it will be um, at the end of business for every particular day. Okay, right. So that's where you find um, email address, contact details for me. And then obviously, if I'm on campus and I'm not in class, I'm downstairs in the main building in the in the business faculty or the School of Commerce faculty, as they call it now, in the, in the staff room. Okay, so that's some valuable information or might not be. Um, but in case, um, don't bother, don't phone the boss, don't phone... Um, Mrs. Um, Bardenhorst or um, anybody, um, if you want to speak to me, direct it to me, those are the direct lines on how to um, get in touch with me. Um, we'll, open, um, we'll open a chat um, room like we have last um, year as well um, very soon. So at the moment, um, I just want to share with you the, um, okay, let's see, I think we need to maybe go to chapter one and not chapter two. Um, right, let's see if there's more pages that's available. There's not, not more any pages that's open. So, oh, there we go. Um, I can use that. Um, right, if I can just share that page with you, that would be wonderful. There we go. And that you will see um, is where we left off last week. Um, I just didn't want in everything just to hang in the air when you finish the first chapter. And if you can remember correctly from the first chapter, it was about specifically identifying the different features and characteristics that um, differentiate between products and service. In other words, how are products and services different, the characteristics and features that we could um, um, apply to, in the, to, to uh, so we can understand the difference between the two and then um, towards the end of um, of Thursday session uh, I'm a Wednesday session sorry uh, I touched on um, the difference between efficiency and um, the difference between efficiency and um, um, effectivity if I can go back to that it is quite simple that you are efficient if you do um, effective if you do the right thing and you are efficient if you do the right thing correctly. Right, so how does productivity impact on that? Because if your business is very productive, then you know that it, um, it's going to um, impact on many levels of your, on many levels of your um, service. Usually when a company and the staff at a company, and remember that's the essential component we also did earlier in chapter one the the three additional p's um, of the marketing mix when it applies to service and that was your processes your people and your um and your physical evidence your physical evidence is the buildings and stuff in itself and the uniforms people wear and the delivery trucks and the whole vibe of the of the um, of the business um but the most important thing there you can have the best processes in place you can have the most fantastic building but if the people working there uh, are inefficient, if they are not productive, you as a customer will experience um, a quality of service below what you expect. And that usually results in quite a number of um, negatives. Um, and we'll look at those negatives of, 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 of poor service um, in our next chapter, chapter two. Okay. 
what I wanted you to, um, or what I want to just highlight is um, um, to finish off chapter one, is to show you how um, different, well, there are different methods, but we're not going to go into greater detail, not in this chapter, in, in later chapters, on measuring your service productivity. But the productivity of your service, in other words, how effective your business um, um, operate, is based on the interrelationship of four components, which is your quality of productivity, um, how the customer participates, uh, and obviously also the demand. In other words, um, how many people, how many customers are actually interested in using the service that your business is offering? Right. So everything comes together um, on this particular page in figure 1.3. And on the previous slide, um, it showed that your quality, your productivity, um, the customers themselves, um, they all impact, plus the demand, all impact on the all over experience. How are the interlinked? Let's just take this particular diagram that looks like a, um, yeah, an experiment gone wrong because there's lots of blocks and arrows and whatever. Now it's quite simple, people. If you look at your quality, if your quality goes up, as it says there, it impacts on the following. Immediately the image of your business is better because customers talk. Customers say, oh, I got great service at that particular business. So your image improves. If your image improves, how does it impact on what every business is on, um, is, is about? Your sales increase, the price all of a sudden of your competitors have to come down because they need to match your, um, your, um, your sales. And one of the reasons to match it is to increase their quality of delivery or to lower their price. So it all benefits in your profit. In other words, if the quality improves, the image improves, the sales improve, as a result of that, your profits go up. Now, if the quality improves, it's not just the image that um, improves. It's also your customer attention. Customers are happy. They want to go back to that, um, that business and use their services again. And as a result of that, obviously, <laughs> sales go up. And the impact is exactly the same um, on that arm because the customers uh, get more involved. If the service was poor, yes, they'll fill in the surveys. If the service are very good and they feel that they can share um, proper feedback with um, management uh, and that management actually listens to them, um, they will share which, um, the problems that they have. And, and that just basically helps your business to be, um, to be more efficient. Another aspect that improves if your quality goes up is that obviously the cost comes down in your case um, and it impacts positively on your productivity because um, less people complain. Um, the time for you to process complaints is done. It's just a win-win situation and your staff become more productive because they can now see the benefits of getting less complaints and better reviews from, um, from the customers. So that's in essence what um, this model or figure, figure 1.3 um, is about to show you the interrelationship between um, quality, productivity and the bottom line as they call it in business, the profits of the business because all businesses, including services, um, are not charities, they're in business to make a profit because that's going to keep them in business right so that the framework of the of the course itself the entire module um the textbook if you want to call it that way we've done chapter one um the next chapter we'll be looking at um shortly is the management of your service quality what is service quality and how do we manage that is it possible to be managed in chapter three, we'll be looking at um, developing, um, in chapter three, you'll be looking at the decisions that customers take, the process that they go through, 
um, in chapter four, we'll be looking at how do we understand the customer better? Um, because if we know, um, we know where to improve on the service that we offer, how to improve the services that we offer, as well as the quality of the service that we offer. Um, in chapter five, we'll be looking at developing and designing um, service models. Um, then how to price a service, because it's quite easy. I mean, if, if you look at, if you look at, um, um, let's, let's compare pick and pay and, 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 and willies, for instance, when it comes to the quality of the um, fresh um, fruit and veg, for instance, which one of those two companies, which of those companies offer the best quality um, veggies and fruits? Willies or pick and pay? Anybody? What would you say? Probably Willies. Probably Willies. Why would you say Willies? Thanks for thanks thanks for taking a, a shot at it. But um, why why Willies? Why you must have a reason. I just I don't know. My mom always buys fruit from Willies and everything else from Pick and Pay. What, and, <laughs> It's probably, yeah, I'm probably directing it at the wrong crowd here because you don't do, very often, most of you don't do your own shopping yet. Um, but um, what does your mom say? Why does she buy the fruit and veg from Willie's? Have, have she given any indication as to why she prefer that? Maybe in a conversation that you've had or maybe in passing or um, maybe when she came back from, from Willie's and said, oh, geez, they, the fruits are so fresh again today. I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't stop buying. Um, any indication why um, why she prefers to buy the fruit and veg at Willie's? Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think she just trusts their fresh produce more than I don't know. It could just be a snob side. <laughs> okay, let me assist you. Here. Have you? Um, I've I've bought fruit and fruits and I've brought veggies at um, especially if, if I want to make salads. I'm talking about the lettuce. I'm talking about tomatoes and mushrooms and and those kind of um, perishable um, 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 veggies and um, and and fruits that will um, yeah. By the way, uh, tomato is a fruit um, that I want to maybe put in the Caesar salad or just a green salad on the side um, to what else you're going to have. Or maybe some evenings you just have a salad because it's actually good for your digestive system as well um you go to pick and pay and you buy it um and we know that your lettuce for instance came uh, comes um vacuum packed in a bag if you open it the air goes out poof and if you keep it in the fridge or regardless if you keep it in the fridge or not it goes off in a day or two Okay, it's, it, it, there's, there's sort of on, on, on some of the leaves of the lettuce, you can see sort of a brown coloring. Um, in the case of Willie's, for instance, same experience. It takes a bit longer for it to reach that point where you can't reuse it once you've opened the bag. So there's a perception among um, consumers that the veggies and the fruits at Willie's is of a higher quality. And because it's of a higher quality, people sometimes go out the way to rather shop at Willie's and not pick and pay or spar one of the others. And I'm not bashing any of the others. This stuff's good as well. It still has to, to meet the minimum criteria for it to be offered in the market. Um, um, but people are then prepared to also slightly pay a bit more because the quality is more. But very often, like in this case, it's a perception that the one is better than the other up to the point where you've experienced it and you can actually make a judgment yourself. If you have not had letters at um, pick and pay and not used letters from Willie's, you will not have experienced this. And as a result, it's very difficult for you to make a judgment to actually, um, to actually um, rate the quality of two products. Yeah. Yes. So the, um, the one day we went to go buy strawberries, I think it was by Checkers or Pick and Pay. Yes, yes. And then the strawberries were like, they look nice and fresh and everything. So we washed it. Mm -hmm. And then in one of the one strawberries, there was like a worm crawling okay. out of the strawberry. 
Uh, that's not what you want. You don't want extra protein with your nice strawberry. But see, and that's and, and, and unfortunately you, that doesn't. There are certain there are certain quality checks that that the produce go through before it reaches. Uh, and even the worst ones. And I'm glad you brought that up because later on during the course we, um, we um, in later chapters we will also address how people complain and customers complain because I mean that's one thing. Sometimes customers and also why customers don't complain. Um, maybe you bought this from a shop that 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 you don't usually buy, so it's out of your way, and you it's too much trouble to go back just for a um, just for for new strawberries, and therefore customers actually ignore it, but they will not go back to that shop. So the impact on a business is is not felt. Um, immediately, um, it's felt later when you have to go and you want to buy strawberries again, but you don't go back to that same shop based on your experience. On the other hand, you have customers who say, no, no way, I've paid for this, I'm going back to the shop. And you show it and, and they usually, they usually, if they are um, 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 sensitive to their image and their reputation, they will replace it and without complaining. But that's a chapter in itself because sometimes customers go back with a legitimate um, complaint like you've had with your worm in the strawberries and the company just throws their arms or the manager or whoever you, you speak to just throws his arms in the air and says, oh, hey, I'm sorry, you know, I mean, we, the things are quality checked. So sometimes also you can get, you can get, um, you get a bad service quality because of the employees not dealing efficiently with a complaint. And that's something that we will address in chapter two when we look at measuring the quality of the service. Um, to continue with the layout of, um, or the framework of the textbook, once we've, and it is difficult, um, chapter six, to, to, to uh, determine a price for a product, uh, for a service. It's, it's, if, you, if you have an apple in your hand, um, and you're very hungry, um, and somebody says uh, it's it's ten rand. Says, oh, she's ten rand. That, those apples, I can I can buy a whole bag for ten rand. Yes, but you still have to get in your car and go to shop and buy it. I have this apple right in front of you. So it becomes depend depends on how badly you want that product at that stage. You are prepared to pay maybe slightly more than um, than usual. Um, it's very easy to put a price on an item like this that you can actually touch and feel. In other words, a product. It's slightly more difficult to, to price a service, especially if you have not experienced the benefits. And I'm, I'm, I'm hammering on this because it, it remains a great example. And that is of insurance policies and medical um, plans that we pay a monthly premium. Today is the first day of the month. Salaries was in on Friday. Today the money's all gone because the debit orders have gone off. Your car, your flat, your um, insurance, your medical. Um, yeah, the house you can experience on a daily basis, and you're not so uh, because uh, you live in it. Um, you can understand it, but um, your insurance policy stuff that you can't really see. It's very difficult in also to to price it um, because you cannot basically touch and feel it. Um, that intangibility. Um, um, characteristic of, of a service um, ensures that that is challenging. Um, the service delivery process we will look at in chapter seven. We'll also look at um, how um, businesses um, can manage the role of their employees in delivering a good service. We also look at chapter nine, um, managing the roles of your service delivery, um, the customer as an equally important role that they play in, in, in the service quality that's delivered. It's not just the employees. Um, the customer plays an important role as well. If we um, are confronted by businesses regularly, I just need a minute of your time. Can you answer two or three questions quickly? Write our service. Is it excellent? Is it not too bad? Or, geez, it's horrible. Um, they usually have three very quick questions that you can answer probably in 10 seconds. And sometimes even, I, I know a lot of businesses have such an electronic function at the till. While you're waiting, while I, um, um, they, they um, um, 
while they are um, um, packing your stuff, um, you can quickly just on the counter there push a red, a yellow, or green button to rate their service. Obviously, red, mm, not great. Uh, green, definitely five star, and yellow, you're unsure. So they have quick methods of doing that. But if the customer, and I'm talking about chapter nine now, if the customer does not attend to that and does not rate the service, they can't complain later on because they've been given an opportunity to, to, to say that something's wrong. Um, so it's a combination between um, the roles that employees who's delivering the service and the customer who's receiving the service, they both have an important role to play in the service process to ensure that the service is delivered properly and received properly. Um, we'll go to chapter 10 and chapter 10 um, will focus on the roles of your physical environment, where the building is situated, what the parking issue is. Um, if you walk in, you actually feel it's a hygienic environment. They all play an important role on, um, in, in, in how you as a customer experience the service. Um, chapter 11 focuses on the, um, the marketing communications mix um, for services. Um, and then we finish off with chapters 12. 13 and 14, where we look at the importance of demand versus capacity, okay? Customers can demand a certain um, um, service from a company. The company just don't have the capacity to deal with it. Um, and chapter 13, we, um, how do we go about uh, as a business to, or as a business who's delivering a service, to ensure that we build good relationships with our customers um, and that we actually um, make them loyal customers and supporters of our service. And then finally, service recovery. Service recovery refers to um, how do you handle complaints and how do you deal, um, how do you turn a bad situation around, for instance. Okay, that's that's chapter chapter one for you. Uh, we finished in the words of um, of somebody that you all know, or probably not know, but know of. Um, who's that? Anybody remember? Uh, can anybody um, recognize Steve that Jobs. person? Steve Jobs. Of course it's Steve Jobs. Um, that's one of my, you're obviously one of the Apple supporters. Um, no, a very insightful. Yeah, so <laughs> I just watched the documentary, or not the documentary, the movie that Ashton Kutcher oh, played in. Yes. That's yeah, I... Yeah. There's, there's a lot, obviously, because Steve Jobs, um, as, as, um, as, as the founder of, of Apple, um, has played a very important role in, in, the, in, in the times we live in. Um, and he's been, yeah, uh, I think Ashton Kirsch has um, um, played the role of Steve Jobs um, as the very eccentric but highly intelligent um, entrepreneur um, very well. I think it's one of the best portrayals of, um, of, of Steve Jobs because there's a lot of um, um, alternative um, videos about the life of, um, of Steve Jobs. But he was, um, yeah, even when he realized that he's going to die, he was also, he brought out some pools of wisdom. So yeah, very often um, these kind of individuals, um, we can, we can pay attention to what they say because they know what they they've been there they've they've they haven't just tried it and um <laughs> uh or heard it or read it on a on a bumper sticker um they've they've done it themselves so i'm going to um share another screen with you now and that would be for chapter two um which is the quality um chapter two is is, is about um is about um measuring um measuring the quality of um of service uh, it is challenging as, as i said before it's one of those things that's extremely difficult to measure and i'll um i'll, I'll, I'll just do the introduction and give you an idea of what we're going to do in chapter two um uh, and then uh, we'll obviously you will um will end the session and then immediately uh, join with the same link again uh, to finish the last 20 minutes of this of this period. Um, quality, I think, 
quality of a product, as I said, because there's, there are some tangible um, features, it's very, it's, it's easier to measure because you've got a yardstick. Um, if you've got um, five products next to each other and they vary in price between eight rand and 10 rand, um, it's very easy to measure it because you've got specific um, um, guidelines and specific um, indicators and attributes and, and, and um, of the product that you can compare. Maybe the one is better um, priced, but the quality is, is not so good. Maybe the other's quality is very good. And if we can use an example, you can probably compare, um, let, let's quickly compare three um, um, popular fast food restaurants. KFC, um, KFC, McDonald's, um, let's stay within that same KFC. Burger King. Burger King and, and, and Nando's. Let's take those four and compare them quickly. Which one would you say is the best quality? Burger King. Burger King. Or Nando's. Nando's. See, well, we are really, uh, um, We all have different opinions on that. Uh, and again, we base it on, on, on what do we base it? On price? Our experiences. On your own experiences, yes. Um, and you will go back to, I have to admit, I mean, um, if I have to choose between Burger King and McDonald's, I'll definitely go that particular route as well. KFC is probably not, um, I can't compare KFC with, um, I don't want to compare KFC with, um, with, with McDonald's or Burger King because um, they are not specialists. In, in, in burgers, um, they special they they specialist in chicken. So I'm not going to even consider having chicken off the menu um, at um, at McDonald's or um, or Burger King. I will go straight to either Nando's or depending on how I want my chicken prepared, either to Nando's or to KFC. So again, the products um, we have to be comparing products, but it's difficult sometimes if you have to compare different um, companies, like in this case. Um, if they don't have exactly the same menu. If um, we want to make this exercise more efficient, you will probably either use the two chicken at, um, fast food specialists and your two burger specialists, McDonald's and, and, and Burger King for that matter, and compare them to maybe Estes for that matter, because they all specialize in, 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 in hamburgers, um, although they have chicken varieties on the menu too. Would you say that Steers is slightly more expensive than the other two, uh, McDonald's and, uh, and Burger King? Which is um, the one? I don't know. You don't know? No, I don't buy at Steers. <laughs> there is a perception out there that they, they, the chips that they offer are the better chips or the best chips of all the three that we um, are looking at, but that they are slightly um, expensive, but they're a bit too expensive. People are not going to go out their way. I'm just going to go there for the chips. No, no, no. I'd much rather pay less and go to Burger King or McDonald's um, and say, okay, right, the chips are not great, or as great as, as theirs, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to pay less um, rather than have a better chip for that matter. Um, because based on the burgers, the burgers are better, and as a result of that, that makes the sale. So it's very difficult or easy to compare these items because they're on a menu and they have a price. So we can we can categorize them and we can say, right, if price and quality are the two um, criteria that we're going to use. It will be very easy to compare these two companies and rate them because um, the prices are different and not exactly the same. And um, based on the experience from customers, um, not necessarily rating them in the same order, the most expensive is also the better quality, sometimes like in this case, I think the better quality is also not the most expensive of the three choices. Um, it becomes difficult when you have a service 